A reading from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, and beginning at verse 16. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. How many of us may have wondered over the years what it might feel like to be in captivity? Perhaps we've reflected on what it might be like to be a prisoner or to be a caged animal in a zoo or a safari park. Not for even a fleeting moment did we imagine that we would all find ourselves in lockdown, our movements restricted, our social interactions completely curtailed and our lives put on hold. Some of us are dependent on other people for delivery of food and medicines. Some of us aren't able to work and don't know when we'll be back. Some of us are in this situation with partner and children, all vying for space and bandwidth. And some are in splendid isolation with no face-to-face -face human interaction. Whatever our individual circumstances, we are all longing for the day when we're released, the day when we're allowed to make our own decisions about when we go out and how far we travel, our own decisions about who we invite into our homes and who we spend time with. Many of us also long for a day when we can see the fuller picture of what is going on, a day when we'll have sufficient information 
to be able to process for ourselves, to see through our own eyes, not the eyes of the experts upon whom we've come to depend. And in this gospel passage, we hear the assurance that Jesus gives to each one of us, quoting the prophet Isaiah. Today, this scripture is fulfilled. He sent me. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And in this Easter season, we're reminded time and again that God's gift wasn't just for the first century inhabitants of the Middle East. The resurrection changed all of that. Jesus lived and moved and had his being in that time and space. And he continues to live and move and have his being in this time and space. The resurrected Christ dwells among us and offers to each one of us, to you and to me, the promise of release from captivity and the recovery of sight. It's a promise of hope, a promise that whatever the situation today, there is the potential for things to be different tomorrow. Jesus's words are as relevant for us today as they were for the earliest disciples. And they are as relevant for us today as they will be when restrictions are lifted. Whatever our current constraints, we're only captives if that's how we see ourselves. We're only blinded if that's how we understand our situation. Whatever we have to face on a day-by-day -day basis, there are freedoms available to us. Insight is on offer to us. God's promise, gifted to us by the risen Christ, is ours if we only allow ourselves the freedom to see it. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in this week of commemoration, we give thanks for peace and freedom and for all those who made the supreme sacrifice to give us this gift. We give thanks that nations who opposed us are now our friends and give grace to those who suffered atrocities to find forgiveness. May we never be unappreciative of what those who went before us have done or take for granted what they achieved. In this time of general lockdown, May we give thanks for good health and appreciate that in the interests of others as well as our own, we have to accept temporary intrusion on that freedom. So we pray for those who are suffering in hospitals, in care homes, or in the community, that they may be healed and return to their usual lifestyle. We pray for those who mourn the loss of a loved one. May they find solace in you. And we pray for those from other nations, both those who have suffered loss in warfare as well as those who have been affected by this pandemic. May we all appreciate the sanctity of life and its core values. Our prayers are also for all who put themselves at risk for the sake of the community. 
for those who work for the public good in unprotected situations, for those who ensure that we can have our health maintained, for those who ensure that we have ample food available, for those who ensure that our streets are kept safe. And we pray for those who've been let down by the system, who've worked without effective personal protection, who've been overlooked often unwittingly because their special needs are not recognized. Especially at this time, we pray for all who are disadvantaged, for those who are homeless, for those who are unemployed, for those whose income stream has been cut off, for those fearing unemployment, loss of their homes or eviction for arrears. We give thanks for government support to so many and for those who've rallied to provide food support and emotional support to those whose needs for these are greatest. We pray for those in government, national and local, in the medical profession, in the judicial system, employers and trade unionists, each group of which have to make difficult decisions which affect us all. We pray for our Queen and members of her household. We pray for the leaders of all nations of the world as their decisions will in due course directly affect us. We give thanks for the Thistle Foundation continuing its work through its 450 employees, either working directly with people or by remote means to aid them physically and mentally. Especially do we pray for veterans whose needs are great. We pray too for the community of the Robin Chapel that we may make our different contributions to show love for all our neighbours. And we sum up all our prayers in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen
a Celtic blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the sun of peace to you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.